So, the topic is about business growth. And when we talk about business growth, we talk about how you've expanded your business in terms of the output, in terms of the workforce, in terms of the outlets you have. So, in as much as you want to expand your business, you are thinking of a business growth. I think it's clear. So, look at what I wrote about business growth. I said business growth implies an increase in the size of a business in terms of the market share, outlets, and output. So, in terms of the size of the business. So it is only when you can compare the size of your business from the past to now that you would know if your business has grown or not. So if you can't compare the size before now to the size you are right now, then you wouldn't know how big or small your business is becoming. Do you understand? So that would just go to what we call ways in which the size of the business can be measured. When you talk about how the size of the business can be measured, it has to be based on you comparing different firms in that industry. You can't have a firm alone and compare and to know how big or small it is. You have to compare it with others. So it's just like you having a farm and you feeling that the farm is the biggest in the world. Because you've not seen other farms. It's only when you see other farms you would know how big your farm is or how small your farm is. Do you understand? So that means if you have to compare the size of a business, we have to compare it with its competitors. So these are the ways in which the size of a business can be compared. One, the number of employees. When we talk about the number of employees, we're talking about the number of workers you have as a firm compared to your competitors. So if your own company has 100 workers, and your competitors has 300 workers. In terms of the numbers of workers your own have, it means your firm, your firm is bigger than that of your competitor, based on the number of workers. So, and when you are comparing the size of the business, everyone has its own perspective. So I could judge, I could base my own research on numbers of workers. You could base your own research on the number of the capital employed. So individuals will have their own basis of judgment. I think, I think it's clear. So I, I might compare with the number of workers, you might compare with the capital employed. So that's the first one. So we're comparing, when you are comparing with the number of employees, it means you are comparing the size of the business based on the workers each firm has in that industry. I remember what an industry is, the combination of firms in that market. So, so different terms become an industry. So two, the size of the market. When you talk about the size of the market, you are talking about how firm A dominates the market. So the dominance a firm has over its competitors is what we mean by the size of the market. So what does that imply? It implies the market share, the percentage the firm is controlling in the market share. So I wrote, this implies the dominance of firm has compared with its competitors, the percentage of the firm's market share. And remember the formula for market share. The total, the total number of sales, the brand sales, divided by the total market share times 100. Right? The third one, the capital employed. When you are comparing the size of a business based on the capital employed, you're talking about the assets and liabilities of a firm compared to the assets and liabilities of other firms in the same industry. I think it's clear. And the fourth one, the sales turnover. When we talk about the sales turnover, we're talking about the revenue made from the quantity sold by a firm compared to the revenue made on the quantity sold by other firms. Do you have any questions about it? You can increase the size of the business internally or increase the size of the business externally. So when we talk about internal, that means we're talking about internal growth. So, if a firm has to grow, business growth implies business growth could be internal growth, internal growth, or external growth. So these are the two ways in which you can increase the size of your business. So now let's talk about internal growth. What is internal growth? Internal growth 
what is called organic gold. Why do you call it organic gold? It is called organic gold because you are expanding your business with your own resources. So all the resources are available to you as a business. That is what you are using for your goals, for your expansion. So look at what I wrote. That this is, okay, how do firms go? Firms can go in two different ways, namely internal or external, which I explained there. So for internal growth, this is referred to as organic growth, as in a firm expands using its own resources. So whatever you use in the expansion were just yours. So you use the resources you have, your own resources, to initiate or to launch your growth or your expansion. That's what we call internal growth. So how do you grow your firm internally? One. First, I'm going to increasing the pit branches. So we have four branches and we want to expand our business. We can expand it to seven or eight branches. That means we have a branch here, we have a branch in Iswata, we have a branch cut across the country. So this branch still belongs to us. We are paying the rent or the properties are ours. So that means you have increased the size of your business internally by having different outlets across the country. That is an internal growth. I think it's there. Two, first I go through franchising. You can also expand your business through selling franchise. You know what a franchise is? It's buying the brand of a business to operate. Yeah. So you're going to have the franchisor will sell its franchise to the franchisee. So you as a business, you are the franchisor, selling your franchise to other outlets. So they're still going to carry your own name. So that means you have extended or expanded your business internally to selling off franchise. I think franchise is clear. The third way in which you can expand your business internally is through attracting investment from larger firms. So you make your, firm, your business look attractive to bigger firms so they invest in your business. Do you understand? So they invest, they, they have their own firms separately, but they are investing in you. It is an investing in you means an internal growth. Because you are not investing in them, they are investing in your business. So the business still belongs to you. And as a result of them investing in your business, you are expanding your business. Do you understand internal growth here? So all these ways of growth are all internal because these things here are the resources of the business. So the business has expanded its business or the business has you know, increase in size or in output or in the market share as a result of using its own resources. So that's why we call it internal. I think it's clear. So go to external growth. You know, we talked about internal, saying you are expanding your business with your own resources, which can be done through you selling franchise as a business, larger business investing into your business. I think we talked about that, or increasing the branches of your business. This is, these are the ways in which you can expand your business internally. Now we'll go to external growth. What is external growth? This is a form of integration which can be done through takeovers or mergers. So, when the firm has to, be taking, has to take over other firms, this is what we call merger, or when other firms take over your own firm, it could be merger, it's takeover. But when two or more firms come together to become one, then that's merger. So let's see the difference between let's see the difference between takeovers and mergers. For takeovers, this implies that a firm instantly increases its size of buying its size by buying the majority stake that's shared in another business, which makes it to become its own. So here we're talking about firm A taking over. Taking over firm B to become firm A. So the name is immediately changed to firm A. That's what we call takeover. I think takeover is clear. A firm buying the majority stake of another business, which makes it automatically its own business. I think it's clear. Then when we talk about merger, for mergers, it means firm A coming together with firm B to become firm A, A, B or having a new name that is merger but for takeover, the, the business that buys the majority stake the majority stake takes the name that is 
takeover. But in merger, they would either form a new name or a combined agreed name. Is it clear? I think we understand the difference between takeovers and mergers now. So, takeovers or mergers, they are both what? Integration. Either takeover or merger, it's integration. So, what are the types of integration we have? We have horizontal integration, we have vertical integration, which can be backward or forward, and we have conglomerate integration. So, these are the three types of integration we have. So, let's go to horizontal integration. Why do we call it horizontal? I said these of us where two or more firms in the same sector of industry integrate together either by merger or takeover. When a firm that is in the educational sector merge, merges or take over a firm in the educational sector, this is horizontal integration. So firm A and firm B are in the same sector of that industry. So this is what we call horizontal integration. Do we understand horizontal integration here? So what are the benefits or advantages or importance of horizontal integration? Number one, it increases the market share. So we are we are merging with FMB is merging with FMB. If FMB has 20% of the market share and FMB has 10% of the market share, it becomes 30%. So due to takeover or merger, through horizontal integration, the market share of both FMB and FMB or FMB has increased. You mean if I have uh, uh, 30 percent and you have 15 percent, I can take over your uh, FMB, right? No, you have me having 50 percent has an edge over you. 15. 15. Yes. Yeah. I can take over. Yes, sure. By buying stake from me, not by buying the customers. You buy stakes in my business. You become part of the owner, shareholders of my business, then you can have my customers. You are not buying the customers, you are buying stake from the business. So in the course of you buying stake from the business, you are you're automatically getting the customers. And when you automatically get the customers, you increase your market share. Clear, right? Two. It allows the firms to get skilled employees from one another. So, FMB has employees. FMB has employees. The skilled ones among them will come together. So this again for, is a win-win situation for FMB and FMB. I think it's clear. Three, it could lead to economies of scale. Expansion. Because of expansion, your cost, you could have a cost advantage. In terms of technology, in terms of purchases, in terms of managerial, in terms of diversification. So, in as much as you are expanding your business, because this is expansion, yes or no? So, in as much as you are expanding your business, you might enjoy economies of scale. And what's the economies of scale? A cost advantage as a result of expanding your business. I think it's clear. So, whenever a business expands, the business must enjoy what we call economies of scale. I think it's clear. So what are the setbacks when it comes to horizontal integration? Number one, there will be duplication of resources, which will lead to workers being made redundant. Firm A and Firm B are going to do the same thing, yes or no? Yes. So that means Firm A and Firm B will automatically have almost the same workers. Mm -hmm. So as a result of this, some workers might be made redundant. Right. What is redundancy, right? Surplus to requirement. Surplus to requirement. This is what redundant means. It means the job that has to be done by two people will have four people for it. So that means two out of these four people has to leave. They have to leave because there's duplication of work, there's duplication of operation, there's duplication of function. So two people can do the job. So we saw it. They are not kicked out, they are not fired, but they are made redundant. Yes. What? Yes. Yeah, so they don't have anything to do. So they will be made redundant and they will be paid for being redundant. Is it clear? Yes. So the first problem about horizontal integration is that workers will be made redundant. Is it clear? Yes. Second, it could lead to these economies of scale. You know we talked about economies of scale here, but whenever a business expands and as a result 
its cost continue to increase, then there's this economies of scale. Listen, a firm, when expanding, should enjoy economies of scale. But in your course of expansion, you are witnessing an increase or increasing cost on production. Then you are, you are suffering from what we call this economies of scale. So some business might expand that they are unable to control the business. You can expand and you now lack communication between your workers because they are too much. That is the economies of scale. You have expanded and you are unable to control in operations the, your business, these economies of scale. You have expanded and as a result of that, your cost of transportation, whatever cost you used to incur, continue to rise or increase these economies of scale. Is it clear? So that is the second problem about horizontal integration. And the third one, there may be culture clash. What is culture? The way of life. So the way firm A operates might be different from the way firm B operates. That's like being in the same industry. They have their own belief, they have their own tradition, they have their ways to work. Because they are coming together with someone we don't have idea about. Two people that you know, two people coming together with not, not in the same background. Then they might be called, they might be clash. And a clash could lead to what we call the economies of skill. A clash could increase the cost of your production. A clash could end your business. So these are the problems we have when there is, when there is what, horizontal integration. Fed A might have ways of working which is different from Fed B. Fed B might have ways of working which is different from Fed A. To get used to the same system might take time. And they might not even get used to it. And if they don't get used to it, what happens? There's a culture clash. Disagreements, conflicts. Is it clear? You have any questions about this? So we go to vertical integration. What is vertical? This of course when the firm from one industry takes over or manages with another firm from another industry sector. So that means a firm in the primary sector manages with a firm in the secondary sector. Do you understand what we mean by in the vertical integration here? A firm in the primary sector matches with the firm in the secondary sector. Like those that are producing goods matches with school. They are, they are working for the same cost. Yes or no? Yes. So this is what we mean by vertical integration. Do you understand? They, they have a relationship in terms of what they produce. So look at what I said about vertical here. Yeah? We have backward vertical, forward vertical. So what's the difference between backward vertical and forward vertical? For backward vertical, this occurs when the firm in the secondary sector, for backward, this occurs when the firm in the secondary sector manages or takes over a firm in the primary sector. It's going back to the primary sector. So an example of a firm in the secondary sector going back to that of the primary sector is a pharmaceutical, is a pharmacist. A pharmacist. A pharmacist is in what? Okay, no, a pharmacy is even in, this, in the tertiary sector. So we can use that as an example. A pharmacy, a pharmacy stock is in the tertiary sector, right? If it takes over a firm that is producing medicines, that is backward integration. Do you understand? The pharmacies, they sell drugs, they sell medicines, right? The pharmacy company produces medicine. So the pharmacy company is in what? Is in the manufacturing sector, which is the second this sector. It produces. Okay? The pharmacy company that produces, now, the pharmacy is taking over the pharmacies, uh, the pharmaceutical company that produces medicines. So that's what we call backward vertical. Do you understand? It's a, a tertiary sector firm taking over a secondary sector firm. Or a secondary sector firm taking over a primary sector firm. That is backward vertical. Do you understand backward vertical here? And for forward vertical, these are all the firm in the primary sector integrates with the firm in the secondary sector. So now, a firm in the primary sector, like company that produces drug, is in the secondary sector because they manufacture, right? Take, takes over a pharmaceutical company. Do you understand? Like Roach is a pharmaceutical company. It's taking 
is taking over Sherry Pharmacy. Sherry Pharmacy is a, pharma, it's, it's a stock that sells medicines. So Roche takes over, or Pfizer takes over a pharmaceutical company. That's what we mean by forward vertical. Is it clear? Do you have any questions about it? He's right.